Hello YouTube, my name is Erin and I wanted to bring you guys a really quick video today and talk about my iPad. I have two super popular videos on my channel that I can link down below for you guys. One was in I think 2017 and one was in 2018 and they were both past videos about what's on my iPad and you guys really loved them. So now it's 2020, it's been two years since I did my last one and so I thought why not bring another one for you guys. Definitely give this video a like and subscribe down below and comment down below if you would like to see a what's on my iPhone. Because I did a what's on my iPhone 7 probably like a year ago now and I have an iPhone 11 now and so I can show you that if you'd like. But let's just get into the video and stop rambling. So this is my iPad 12.7 inch iPad Pro. I love it. It's my baby. It's obviously the white and silver. It has the camera on the back and yeah, pretty self-explanatory. This is my Apple keyboard case. It's worked for me well because I like to type and take notes on my iPad, but it doesn't work that well. A lot of the times, I'm sure you'll see a notification while I'm filming this video, a lot of the times it will say application not supported or something like that. And it's just really frustrating because I feel like it takes a lot for the keyboard to actually connect and work, which is obviously not ideal, but it is ideal for filming a what's on my iPad video because I can prop my iPad like this and you guys can see get like a better clear vision of what's on my iPad so sorry if the screen goes black at any point and you see the utility cart that you're balancing on see you can see it in the reflection oh my god but this is my lock screen this is the wallpaper that the iPad comes with I just haven't changed it it's been like this in every single iPad video and I don't really plan on changing it but I'm not gonna show you guys my password so I quickly just logged in for you guys but I have one two three four sort of five pages of apps on my iPad and so I thought I would just go through all of them for you guys so starting off in the left hand corner I have Gmail I have the email for when I apply for jobs, I have the email for my YouTube channel, and I have the email for my podcast. If you guys don't know, I have a podcast called Love You Mean It on pretty much every single podcasting platform. Obviously, answer emails for that on there. Next up, I have Outlook. I could probably delete it at this point, but that was actually the email that I used for my school. I just recently graduated in May from the University of New Haven, and that was where I got emails from. Next up, I had Google Next up, I have Google Calendar. I've been more of a fan of instead of using a physical calendar, even just like a physical one or a, even like a planning app like Google Calendar, I instead randomly use the Notes app on my phone, on my iPad, my laptop. They're all synced up through my iCloud, but I use that and I just write out potential dates and I mean, I guess I could pull it up for you guys, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Next up, I have FaceTime. I don't FaceTime on here. Hey, I don't FaceTime on my iPad, so it's not logged in on there. I have photos. Mostly when I use photos on my iPad for is obviously I don't take photos on my iPad because no, but I normally edit a lot of the photos that go into thumbnails for my YouTube channel on here. I have the camera. The iPad has a pretty great camera as you can tell, however, I don't use it because I don't take photos on my iPad. Next up I have YouTube. YouTube is probably one of the apps that I use most on here. I use it to look at my own channel, to watch my subscriptions. I am a huge YouTube watcher. And so, some of my subscriptions if you'd like to see, but I also, a lot of the times, if I'm exporting a video or doing something that takes up a lot of laptop power, I will set up my iPad next to my laptop and, like, watch a video as I'm working, so it almost works as, like, a dual monitor. Next up, I have the clock. The clock is super important to me because I'm someone that has overslept my alarms in the past, which is definitely not fun. And to kind of combat that, I will set my phone alarm and my iPad alarm. And the iPad alarm is so strong that it will literally shake my bed. This is like the time I used to have to get up for work. Now we open up a lot later and so I don't have to wake up that early. But you can see why I would have to set multiple alarms because waking up at 5 a.m. is not natural for me. Next up, I have contacts on my iPad. Not really necessary, I guess. I do text often for my iPad, but not really the most important app location on here, I would definitely say. Next up, I have notes. As I said, I will flash you my to-do list really quick. So I mostly use notes on my iPad for when I'm taking my to-do list, like I said. So I have every single day and things that I have to plan for the future, such as getting a flu shot, I will write down below there. And then I will, every single week, I leave the headings as you can see, but I'll just fill in what I have to do every single day. And then when it comes to Sunday and I'm planning for the next week, I just plan out all these things and put it in here. And I mostly use my iPad as well for when it comes to podcasting because we mostly, so we post every single Monday. 
and mostly our Monday episodes are with a guest and our Thursday episodes that are like bonus episodes are me and my co-host but I normally we have so I'll just show you really quick we just interviewed a therapist and so we share this doc and we add all the questions that we had about substance abuse recovery therapy all of that stuff I like having it on notes because then it's just really easy to follow next up I have reminders I used to use reminders like I use notes now as you can see as like a to-do list so I have Friday Monday I have every single day of the week I had a to-do list but it's just really not as practical as I would have liked and I find notes to be really easy Next up I have news. There's a lot going on in the news right now. It's pretty scary. I have news notifications on so I don't necessarily scroll through the news app but I do have notifications on for various platforms so that I can at least stay informed about everything that's going on. Next up I have the app store. Obviously need that to download apps. Next up I have my settings. There's never really anything too exciting on here but regardless this is what it looks like. I have my TED Talk app. I've talked about it in my What's on My iPad videos before, but I love the TED Talk app. First of all, just love watching TED Talks. They're just really quick motivational videos from listening to really cool people. They have like this timer button where you can press like what kind of talk that you're looking for, like a happy one, a motivational one, a sad one, and you can say like how much time that you have and they will like randomly pick one for you. And I really like that. I'm not going to wait for that to load. Next up I have iMovie. I use iMovie to edit my videos if you guys didn't know. I'm hoping in the future to one day get Final Cut but it's $250 so it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. One time my laptop wasn't working a few years ago. You can tell these are really old. This is from like my sophomore year of college but I had to somehow edit on my iPad. So it's definitely possible but I just don't like to do it. Next up, I have Duolingo, my favorite app. Duolingo is probably honestly up there as being one of my favorites. You can learn any language. I'm currently learning Spanish and I have a lot to get through. I took AP Spanish, but I'm trying to just like refresh and start from the beginning and teach myself again. But you can teach yourself pretty much any language and it's free. There are ads, but I don't really find them too distracting. Next up is Khan Academy. I haven't used this in a while. A lot of these are still left over from when I went to school as well, but there's just like all these different lessons. I think for a majority of them, you do have to pay, but I think it is great kind of as a learning resource. Blackboard, a lot of schools will use Canvas or something like that when it comes to receiving assignments and being able to talk to teachers. We used Blackboard. It was pretty okay. It wasn't like a life-changing platform or anything. I'll talk about my doc. So these don't really count because Normally these are like my three most used apps, but because I just opened those three, that's why they're there. I have Messages, Google Chrome, Safari. I don't like Safari. I'm a big Google Chrome gal. Spotify. I pay for Spotify Premium. You can listen to pretty much every single song, make playlists. You can stream it from anywhere, download playlists. It's incredible. And then Files. This is where I used to save all of my files when I used to take notes on my iPad. That's where I would take notes. I didn't really like taking notebook notes because if I wanted to search for anything in my notes during my semester online last semester before I graduated I liked taking my online class notes on my iPad it just made it so much easier going on to the next page next up I have tips this just comes on it it honestly gives you pretty great tips though just about how to navigate all of Apple products and kind of like maybe some secret hacks that you wouldn't know about Podcasts. I love my podcast app. I recently like wiped all of the podcasts that I was subscribed to and I'm like slowly resubscribing to them because I accidentally downloaded all of them to my like my laptop and it took up so much space but you can browse. This is my podcast if you'd like to know but The Daily is a really great podcast and then Gals on the Go is pretty good and Manifest is Tori D. Simone. She hasn't uploaded in a while but these are some of my favorite podcasts. That I like to listen to so if you want to hear more about podcasts I listen to I can talk about it in a vlog in the future but I don't really want to waste your time talking about it photo booth I used to jokingly take pictures with this in class everybody knows like using photo booth in high school or in high school in like elementary school middle school used to take the most embarrassing pictures ever Next up, I have Find My Friends. I'm not going to click on that. I have, like, the locations of people that are really important to me, but also, if you didn't know, well, it's not on the iPad, but on the iPhone, Find My Friends and Find My iPhone are now, like, one app. And so, like, I have, like, my family on that app, and then I have my roommate. Well, both my roommates on there. And then some of my other friends. And then Find My iPhone. Obviously, you can find your iPhone. I can find my Mac. I can find my AirPods. I lost my AirPods the other day. They were in my room, so I didn't really lose them, I, and I knew they were in there, but... Clips, I've actually never used before. It's that one right over there. I really don't know the use of it. iTunes University is kind of similar to Tips, where you can just pretty much learn 
anything. I think it's more like they have courses and books and things. I know they have like Yale courses on here, which I think is really cool. Obviously, I live in New Haven, so I'm right down the street from Yale, so I think that's really interesting. Pages, keynote, and numbers I don't use on my iPad. I only use those on my laptop. Pages is like Microsoft Word, keynote is like PowerPoint, and then numbers is like Excel. I don't really use them for my iPad, but I think it's totally easy to utilize them on here and actually make them like work for you. Honestly, I feel like the 12.7 inch iPad Pro is just great if you need something to kind of replace a laptop. If you do more like video work like I do, I don't really recommend it as being like your sole, I don't know, just like your sole device, but it definitely is a great addition. Next up, I have Facebook right over there. I use Facebook to keep in touch with my family. I have quite a large extended family, so it's really great to have that. I also share my videos to Facebook. Pinterest, I haven't been on in honestly years. I want to start like utilizing it as a way to improve SEO. I I'm like I mainly use Pinterest when it comes to recipes because I've been really getting into cooking and trying new recipes and things like that, and so that's really what I use that for. Twitter, I probably should delete because I actually deactivated my Twitter account. I really stopped, I was only really using it to like send memes to my friends and I stopped going on in like March when the pandemic hit the US because I really could not handle it and it was just kind of overwhelming and then I just never went on so about a month ago I deactivated my Twitter account. Lightroom is really great, it's Adobe Lightroom so you can actually edit photos on there. A lot of photographers use that to edit their photos and I feel like it works pretty great. I love this guy with my favorite way to edit my pictures for Instagram and when I used to do amateur photography. It's also how I edit my pictures for my thumbnails for YouTube so that's pretty great. Next up I have Evernote right down there in the corner. That's just kind of like another note taking app. I was looking originally before I downloaded Microsoft Word which we'll obviously get to. I was looking for an app that I could use to write notes on and I downloaded that. It's not really like it's, it's like a pretty decent app. I could probably delete it because I haven't used it in a while. This is kind of going to be a great way to like go through my iPad and like purge things because I'm realizing all the apps that like I don't use, but it's pretty decent. I just don't use it as much as I probably should. Quizlet, I love, like I didn't have too many flashcard related assignments in college, but in high school I definitely did. It's basically a way that you can make digital flashcards and it plays, like makes games with you and you could, there's also an app that you can carry on the go. And so I would always do that like if I was like riding the bus or something or I was like just in some place where I had some extra time and didn't want to just scroll on my phone. It was just so easy. Next up I have Procreate. I actually just uploaded a vlog about going back to work during a pandemic and I think it went up before this one so go check it out but I wrote the beginning graphic. I write it on here. You can draw so many things on there. My roommate drew our podcast cover on Procreate. It's just so cool getting to see all the different things that people can do. I have Facebook Messenger. Clearly I have some messenger, like messages to answer, but I kind of hate Facebook Messenger. I hate that it's like a separate app. It's just so weird. And then Microsoft Word. Obviously I used to have my notes on here and I would take notes on here in class. I would take notes on videos. I would take notes on literally everything. This is for my persuasion of communications class. I would take the textbook notes myself and clearly there was a lot of writing. Next page, Netflix. I love watching Netflix. I have a Netflix account with my family. Love using it. Currently watching Grey's Anatomy. Highly recommend. Next app is the Kindle app. If you don't have a Kindle, the Kindle app is kind of a great alternative because you can like buy books for the Kindle but send them to your iPad and it's just great. I don't know if you can send Kindle books to your books account on here but I just love having the Kindle app. Currently reading Midnight Sun, the new Twilight book. It's pretty good. Peak, I, it's an app that I downloaded. It's basically like a brain app. And, but I didn't realize that you have to pay for it. Like, you have to pay to basically, like, I don't know, you just have to pay pretty much to use the app, and I just don't really see the point in that. YouTube Studio. This is where I check the stats for my YouTube channel, as well as the YouTube channel that my co-host and I have for our podcast. I just uploaded a video, like I said, so... I was replying to comments yesterday because I uploaded a video on Sunday. It was like a Trader Joe's grocery haul and people seemed to like that. So that was good. Microsoft Teams. I took a class my sophomore year of college at UNH and we needed to have Microsoft Teams to work on a group project and it's fine. Like it gets the job done, but it's just kind of annoying. Next up, I have Google Drive. I keep a lot of documents on there, a lot, especially like when my when I need to like send something to somebody or I need something to just be on me at all times, my iCloud account gets full pretty quickly and so it's really nice to have that. One note, I also had that because of the class I took my sophomore year. So that's the same reason why I had the Microsoft Teams app. We like needed to pretty much just like document all of the quote unquote like team meetings we had and just like see what we were doing. 
Next up I have Weebly. My junior year I took a class all about web design and now I do freelance web design on the side so that's fun. But I had that account, I had that app because we started like making websites on Weebly and then we ended up switching to Wix thankfully because Wix is so much easier to use. Microsoft PowerPoint because I did like one PowerPoint assignment I think on my iPad or I think I downloaded this because I needed to like go over the assignment and also a lot of the times like when my teachers would send PowerPoints I like wanted a better way to look at it and so did that. People's Bank, that's my banking app. I don't really use it that much on my iPad, it's more on my phone but it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of funny but it's kind of also kind of useful that whenever I download an app to my iPhone it also downloads to my iPad because of the iCloud so I mean I guess that's fine. Next up I have Unum. I haven't used it in a while, UNUM, so I obviously have to log in but basically you can like plan your feed almost and just like see how things will look. I'm obviously not an influencer or a content creator but I think it was just, I mean I guess I am but I'm not an Instagram star and so if I was I would probably use that. Next up I have Xfinity. It's the Xfinity app. It's how I report outages. It's how I pay our Wi-Fi bill. It's how I just check in on everything at our apartment. I also get notifications when people sign on to our Wi-Fi, so that's nice, I guess. Next up, I have the Ballpark app. I got that app. I probably could delete that too, but I got that app basically when my friend Ariel and I were going to a Red Sox game, and I bought a ticket off of there. I also have the iBooks app. I don't think I have any. Actually, I used to download textbooks on here now that I'm thinking about that. So definitely recommend. I like having e-textbooks. Not only are they less expensive, but they're just easier to carry. Muya, it's like a burger place by my school. Spark Post, we had to use like Adobe Spark Post and we had to make a, well I think we necessarily, we had to like pick an application and we had to do a project on that. And so I did a project on that with my friend Kelsey and then we had to do a slides presentation on Adobe Spark Post. And so slides and that's the reason I have it. Google Slides, it's basically Google's version of PowerPoint. And then next up I have the Clue app. Sorry if anybody's grossed out by this but you shouldn't but the Clue app is basically where you can track your period. Once again I mostly track it on my phone but you can track symptoms, how long it goes for, just like how you're feeling overall and it's really great because then it will kind of predict when your period is going to happen next, especially if it's like pretty irregular. It will track like your cycle, all of that, and it will literally give you a notification and be like, hey girl, like your period's going to come tomorrow and it's the worst notification to get ever. Next up, I have Anchor. Like I said, I have a podcast called Love You Mean It on every single podcasting platform. But honestly, Anchor is just like the best app ever. You can record on there. You can record with friends. You can edit on there. You can make money from your podcast on Anchor literally with one listener so it's honestly pretty great next up i have costar that's an astrology app i do believe in astrology but costar is kind of weird so i don't really pay attention to it all the time i have xfinity that's just kind of an extension of my prior xfinity account that you guys saw earlier and then oops and then i have my chart um with everything going on with covid i can't go into the doctors so i've had to have like telehealth doctor's appointments and you do it on there calm app i once again tried to download it wanted to do meditation and all that realized you have to pay and when there's free meditation basically everywhere it's not really something i want to do shop is an app where i can track my shipments so like i'll buy something and then it will like Obviously, like, track the shipment, let me know when it's coming, and give me, like, the map, of, like, tracking number, all of that. Next up is iFit. My family has an iFit subscription. The elliptical that we have at my parents' house is iFit, and so I can track my account on here. Log workouts, yada, yada. Target. I love the Target app because I can check, like, the stock of things if I'm going to get something, especially with Corona and everything. I don't really want to be, like, going to the, like, I don't know, just going to the store all the time, especially if they don't have what I'm looking for. Best Buy app, same thing. We recently, like a few months ago, bought two podcast microphones for my podcast and wanted to check the stock of them at Best Buy. I think we ordered, I think at the time they weren't allowing people to go into the store, so we ordered it and then like picked it up curbside, which is actually really cool. Starbucks, I obviously don't use the app on my iPad, but I do use it for my phone. Obviously, order all of that. 5K app, it's basically it's like a couch to 5K app, and you tell them about like your health and like your goals and everything, and they'll give you kind of like a baseline and just like a plan to follow so you can run 5Ks by yourself. Chipotle app, same thing. Order Chipotle on there. Pepe's app, I live in New Haven. It's a pizza place. So some of these apps are kind of like more relevant to me, I guess, but whatever. 
And then I have PayPal. I have a merch shop for my podcast and they like it's through Redbubble and they pay you through PayPal. So that's why I have that on here. And then picture this is one of my favorite apps ever. So basically it's an app and obviously and I have three plants in my house and well in my apartment and if a leaf is yellow for example I'll take a picture of the leaf it'll tell me like what kind of plant it is and then it will tell me like what's wrong with it and help me to fix it and the last app I have is Wim Hof Method so basically the Skinny Confidential which is a podcast they talked all about the Wim Hof Method and they had the guy that created it on and it's basically just like a way of breathing that is really supposed to help alleviate anxiety anyways that is my tour in what's on my iPad what's on my Apple iPad, my 12.7 inch iPad, my baby. I love it so much. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, let me know if you want me to do a what's on my iPhone video because I would love to do it. And without further ado, I will see you in my next upload. Have a great day.